Outstanding Limited Liability Partnership as a new business trend in Kenya. And I was looking for the resources and you may define it clearly. Nikapata Bowman's, Bowman's Law Firm in Kenya and Omeandika extensively on that area. But I will read the summary of it for us not to confuse with the general ones. So remember on March 16th, 2012, your LLPs Act Ilipitishwa. Now the Act in introduce a new form of business association known as Limited Liability Partnerships. The LLP combines some of, some of the features of a traditional partnership and now in enda kufanana ni kama kampuni. And to be brief, an LLP is established through registration under the LLP Act of 2012. And an LLP must have at least two partners and one manager. And the LLP Act payment layer proceed to say that the partners may be natural persons or a body corporate. And the manager is to be a natural person. So when an LLP came into place, unapata the previous partnerships, a kukuana provision ya a body corporate can become a partner. So this one trend in a make an LLP to be a, to be a new vehicle drive in Kenya. Then pia kuna another point here, an LLP is a separate legal entity from its partners. In this respect, it is similar, similar to a company and different from a typical partnership. Remember a typical partnership, the acts of the partners in a bound the partnership to in the whole. Like you know, for an LLP, every partner is liable for his own wrongful omission ama act. So in a adu law firms mingi zina opt for go, to go for LLPs because everyone will be responsible. Alafu pia unapata another point here LLP ni partners of an LLP are not liable for the firm's debts and obligations nor are they liable for each other debts and obligations. This is not the case ikikuja kwa general partnership because in general partnership unapata when the company when the partner, general partnership is in debt an incoming partner or a retiring partner, in some way they are liable. Na tukikuja kuangalia liability of partners, kwa general partnerships, utapata it is true. Now for the LLPs, everyone is liable for his own debts and obligation. Then still under LLP, an individual, individual partners in an LLP are liable for their own wrongful acts or omissions. The LLP is also liable for partners' wrongful acts or omissions to the same extent as that partner. So you find that when an LLP may occupy authority to do some scope of work and you are doing that scope of work and in the, as a result you encounter an omission ama act, itakuja iku, iku pay backup because ina, inakuja now to appreciate partnership ikikuwa ina collaboration with the company. So uh, nilikuwa na admit mtu, allow me to go back. Alafu pia another thing I noted, ni when looking on LLPs from a tax perspective, it may prove more effective than a company because currently partnership income is taxed in the hands of the individual partners and not at the firm level. This means that LLPs can make profit. They are not subjected to the normal tax like a company. Kumbuka companies in a tax at the entity level and any dividends zinakuanga taxed in the hands of shareholders. So you will find that tax in India ambaka shareholders, na at the same time, una, una, if, if you announce that this is the profit we make as a company this year, it will be subjected to tax. But when you look at LLPs, now the tax is taxed in the individual hands of the partners, na ifiki at the firm level. If you look at countries like UN, in the UK, India, na USA, the LLPs mekua generally treated as a pass through which nini tax purposes in akua avoided. Now unapata in, in in doing so, most people wanna opt for LLPs because they are cheaper when you look at the tax perspective. I love be another thing I also discovered on LLPs is that the number of partners is not restricted. Remember the companies act restrict the number of partners in a general partnership to no more than twenty. But the same same partnership act it may create a curve out for other partnerships. And an LLP is one of the carved out partnership because it has, it has no limited number of partners when you are going into it. Then Alafupi, another area I noted, I noted was LLP Act 
in a prescribed mechanism to convert existing partnerships and private companies into LLPs. This is a great move because unapata general partnerships na some private companies zina find it easy to convert to LLP. So in doing so, the, the government ni kama zinajaribu ku encourage more partnership and private companies to turn into LLPs. So I believe at that point, now everyone amekuja ku understand the general idea behind LLPs kukua information. But kuna one challenge bado ina hinder this sector is that the registrar bado of LLPs ajakua developed in his own independent capacity but tuna depend bado kwa registrar of companies. So you can find that at times the registrar of companies and it's a core overwhelmed when one is trying to establish a first LLP. So at that point, I believe we have fully understa understood what you mean by an LLP as a new business trend in Kenya. And if you are planning to open a law firm in future, it's better you go for the LLP, even from the tax of any perspective. So I believe at that point we are all set any comment, question, feedback before we jump to the second point? Okay, sawa sawa. If there is none, let us proceed. I believe now it is clear to your screen. So we are going to look generally the difference between a partnership and a co-ownership. And anyone else here on a I found Saturn versus Free. This is a document prepared by Lucas Mchoki. Na he, he had been tab tabulating all that which Madame Mekua Kifunza and research in the background. So we will be reading this document. So and number one, if we look at who is a part, what is a partnership, so upon, I will read the first statement. It says, partners contribute money, property, or personal labor or skill with the expectation of sharing in an organization's business, profits, and losses. So that's the EU Mendeleani definition to put emphasis on what constitutes a partnership. Now, to be very clear, if you look at this case, certain company versus Frey, a case that occurred in 1894, it was a firm of stock borrowers had entered into an agreement with X, who is not a stock borrower. They agreed that X should introduce the client to them and they should transact business in stock exchange for such client. The term of the contract was that X would receive half of the profit in respect of such agreement and pay the firm half of the losses and card. It was held that partnership existed in this case because what was divided was gross returns and not profit. So, uh, on, against the background of that information, allow me to look at the first schedule. Allow me to look at the first schedule. Lavin Karibu. Allow to to kiangalia the first schedule. Let me go there. Niwatu wana join do na endelea tu kwa ingiza. Apologies for the short. So anyone with a amefungu apo partnership act and is an idea. Asome tu the first schedule for you to understand what you mean by you you doing business with another person is not a guarantee that you are in a partnership. And I believe that point in a kwanga very vital when it comes to this distinction. Now to aliambio pio asome that part. So anyone with a partnership act amefungua, because once I try opening a partnership act, I will mess everything in this meeting. So anyone else and is an Partnership act, read the first schedule on instances where a person is not directly meaning that they are in a partnership. I'll greatly appreciate Anyone? So, nimepata, nimepata. So, if you look at the first schedule of Partnership Act in Asema, these are the instances when persons do not carry on business together. And I believe certain company versus free payment emphasize on it. Number one, when Asema receiving payment. If you receive payment from a person, it's not a direct guarantee that you are in partnership with that person. If you also act as an agent of, a, of an employee of a partnership is not directly in a referral that you are a partner in that partnership. And if you receive a debt, if that partnership in a kulipa deni, deni yako, is not a guarantee that you are in partnership with that part, firm. 
Alafu pia if you are a beneficiary of the estate of a deceased partner in a partnership is also not is not also a direct mini di ticket that you are a partner in that partnership and if you also lend money to a partnership it does not mean that you are a partner in that partnership and if you also take part in selling the goodwill of the business it is also one ground that tells you you are not a partner and number two because that was section one then we are going to section two of battle first schedule in a sema share an interest in property if you have a common interest with with the property in, of this partnership is also not a direct entity direct detail that you are a, a partner in that partnership but rather you form what we call a co-ownership and number three if you share gross profits and if you saw in that certain company versus free it was that they were arguing on gross returns and not profit so if you if you unataka kuingia on mere mere acquisition that you nambiwa when a partnership is dissolved it comes to an end dissolution by expiration or notice in a provider under section 37 dissolution pia can occur by bankruptcy death or charge number four, dissolution can also occur by illegality of the partnership if the partnership now is engaging in an illegal act Dissolution may also occur by court orders. Number six, change in constitution of partnership in a fanya peer equal dissolve. And partner may notify dissolution to the rest. Na peer neza notify to the court na kuje na ground justifiable for him to dissolve this partnership. Continuing authority of partners for purposes of winding up. What will be the nini new authority ikikuja kwa partners like for example when a liquidator tu, utapata when a liquidator ameshakuwa appointed now the nini powers of the partners zinakuwa zina cease their authority zina cease for the purposes of winding up wanakuwa frozen wanakuwa hivyo yomisha now alafu pia number 9 kuna rights of partners as to application of partnership property every partner kumbuka kuna ratio yake ya kugawiwa partnership property and will also uh, encounter tukikuja kwa hizo steps na how how nini partnership property itakuwa located when it comes to dissolution alafu kuna appointment of premium where partnership prematurely dissolve unapata in some instances where a partnership ilikuwa inaendelea tu vizuri and maybe one partner ama wa, wengi half of the partners wakajitoa wakaacha kufanya kazi inakuwa impliedly that the partnership imekuwa prematurely dissolved what is the premium in our tuingia watakuwa wanaendelea enye watapewa as per that act then kuna rights where partnership dissolve for fraud or misrepresentation kuna right of outgoing partner in certain cases to share profits made after dissolution kuna retiring or deceased partner share to a debt na finally kuna rule for distribution of assets on final settlements of accounts tutakuja pia kupata that roles of a liquidator as provided for in the schedules of the partnership act moja ni kuprepare annual account na then kuna kitu kingine pia nafaa kuprepare inaitwa final statement of accounts what are this and is it za tusaidia aje now let us jump into the steps one by one when it comes to dissolution of a partnership in Kenya unless anyone has a question we can proceed our comment so if we jump now to the steps remember when you have been told discuss the steps of dissolution of a partnership nipo uandike kwanza various ways how a partnership can be dissolved uh, can be dissolved uh, can be can be wounded up by the highlights kutoka number 1 hadi number number 6 number 6 in unaona in the screen so number 1 if i jump into now section 40 ndio ina give the first step Step number one inasema a partnership may be wound up by one or more partners. So that means one partner na iza more initiate aende kwa court na receive court orders ama pia in agreement with the rest wanaweza more pia ku initiate themselves voluntarily. Then ukitoka hapo let's say wameamua sasa ku dissolve. Unapata step number two, itakuwa distribution of partners assets on winding up. The following rules must apply. So if you want now to gawa this property you must stick to the following rules number one, payment of any amounts owed from the partnership you may provide you for under section 41 do you know provide these rules then you have to comply with as step 2 of dissolution so 
kama kuna payments yoyote this partnership ijalipa its own partners kwanza iwalipe then number 2 kukuwe na payment of debts by the partners if the partner kona deni kwa hiyo partnership alipe pia deni yake then kuna payment of amounts owed to partners hiyo it's a repetition then kuna sharing of any surplus assets unapata at some point a partnership inataka ku dissolve and it has a lot of assets to an extent they never discovered they had a surplus so how will they distribute that surplus asset then kuwe na partners contribution towards deficiency at times a partnership may think that it has completed its debts and obligations to creditors but in reality awajamaliza so kuwe na partners contribution towards that deficiency yenye itapatikana and at that point is being a step 2 unapata now you can proceed with the next steps steps and if you look at section 42 it talks on dissolution of partnership which has broken up and remember kuna ukiangalia section 35 of partnership act inasema kuna some instances where a partnership may break up For example you are number of partners ku kuwa below two unapata hiyo ni direct entity that the partnership imekuwa broken up so wanasema in another scenario lakini bado ina form under step number three. because unapata dissolution can occur when already it had or nini already broken up let me add someone okay sawa sawa so let us continue so unapata all partnership property is distributed to persons entitled to it when it comes to dissolution of a partnership yenye already ilikuwa imeshakuwa broken up kwanza mmalizie mambo ya property all partnership property to be distributed to persons entitled to it na kusikwe na any outstanding liabilities kusikwe na any outstanding claims na if a liquidator before i mention a liquidator nataka niwaambie kwa nini nime include section 42 as in the second steps when it comes to dissolution of a partnership ni may include because unapata section 41 bado ilikuwa inaongelea kwa distribution of partners assets on winding up now number 2 here dissolution of partnership which has broken up bado pia inaongelea kugawa mali so step number 1 ni kuagree mnataka ku dissolve ku ku wind up this thing then step number 2 mugawe mali mugawe mali either mli agree in section 41 ama hadi kama mli break up bado mnagawa mali in section 42 that's why in a make a flow Then if you are keen now we are going to the next step na the next step ina involve kitu naitwa liquidator and if you look bado under section 42 wanasema if a liquidator has been appointed under section 53 of the partnership act the liquidator has ceased to hold office without being replaced itakuwa one of the grounds for dissolution so kama kulikuwa na election of a liquidator na cases to take place that will also result to a liquidation process as per section 42 of the partnership act now allow me now to 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 ingia sasa kwa hii part ya step number 3 who is a liquidator and anakuja kufanya nini na anatoka wapi so if you look at section 52 of partnership act wanasema power of the court to appoint a liquidator So after the first step uko juu huyu partner amepeleka mashtaka kotini anataka this partnership ikue dissolved unapata now the power of the court has that power to appoint a liquidator and step number three, bado inaendelea inasema this will occur after an application from a partner or also a person interested in the winding up of the partnership or a creditor pia a creditor can institute a dissolution order kutoka kwa koti now an order appointing a liquidator is made and let me take you back to company's dissolution process do in some way bado ni kazi nenda kukaribiana kulikuwa na liquidator ni mtu mwenye ako within the partnership alafu unapata muna mu appoint mnasema wundi ataangalia ata, ata guide how the winding up process itakuja ku take place Dissolution is that process for you to wind up at least about to go clear so unapata when this liquidator na kuwa appointed unapata at times hawa kuangi wame kuja in conclusion ni nani atakuwa liquidator na yet hiki kitu maybe inataka kuwa dissolved with agency which you maybe a fraud alafu institute mwanzisho sa court procedure za fraud me fraud the public so unapata at times high court iko na power ya kuamua a provisional liquidator to come into place kuwasaidia mki 
endelea anga bado mki dissolve your property and a provisional liquidator is a person mwenye amekuja from the court now winding up imekuwa procedural nini under step 4 sasa huyu liquidator after the court order ime, imetolewa for appointment of this liquidator if you look now at the second schedule of the partnership act ndio sasa ina provide winding up process by a liquidator now if anyone has the partnership act please aneza fungua hiyo the second schedule na aneza angalia the steps and step number one ina kuanga all the powers of the partners zina cease operation hiyo ni step number four mjue sasa tu partners wote wana seize operation and who takes charge mwenye anachukua charge ni liquidator and the liquidator anafaa kufanya kitu inaitwa annual preparation of accounts annual preparation of accounts inamaanisha if that partnership inakuwa dissolved maybe hapo august anafaa kuprepare annual reports ya venye mligawa mali ya venye watu wenye claims zimelipo madeni zimelipo yende anakuja kusupa kuangalia hizo requirements hizo rules zenye zilikuwa uko step number one. kama zimekuwa complied with zote na ana make this annual report to who to the high court anapeana hiyo report then akishapeana hiyo report anaitisha a meeting ya kusema we we wrote this report and if you have any dispute to concerning the report please raise your concerns hiyo area lazima address to the partners then Finally ana factoringiza kitu inaitwa final final annual accounts report. Final annual reports f- not nini final account statements. Hiyo si annual, hiyo sasa ni ya mwisho kabisa. Hiyo sasa ni ya kuonesha all steps, all receipts zenye amepewa, everything yenye ame encounter, observation na his own ob- conclusion kama kitu inafaa kuwa wounded up at that time ama yongezebe time. He has the right ya kuitisha discretion of the court to extend time ya this partnership kwaza iendelee kwaza kulipa deni zao ama kuna shida imepatikana mahali ama kuna asset aina title deed so akona hiyo time ya kurequire that extension of time and then finally part moja uli kudeta na lipo na nani uli kudeta before amalize kazi yake anaambianga wa partners ndio nishamaliza kazi lakini it is your own assets that are going to give me my payment remuneration so unapata the last thing ni liquidator anakuwa remunerated and anapeleka report to the high court with all receipts salary received then inakuwa wounded up registrar anapewa anapewa notice na inaeko kwa gazette that the partnership is no longer in existed in existment and mpaka ina affect huko kwa name search now you cannot search the name enye itakuwa so close with that partnership since it has been wounded up now dissolution is that process of winding up and winding up now is the final step and registrar kishapata this information from the gazette notice and remove the partnership name from the book of partnerships in Kenya so i believe at that point you have the steps and you have also the authorities zenye zina ku guide if you want to look at deeply now the functions of this liquidator look also in the second schedule apo part ya mwisho mwisho wamesema these are the other roles za liquidator zenye pia bado anaweza take part into so i believe at that point we are in agreement on when it comes to dissolution of partnership process and its consequences in kenya consequence number one, partnership inakufa na inakuja to an end alafu partners will lose their roles so if anyone can allow me niangalia now what was the next part Anyone with a question before now we also jump to the cooperative societies in Kenya because one thing i discovered mnakumbuka the previous exam alikuja na, na tulipo presentation on ni modat nini principal exceptions alafu that day akakuja na cut akatupea so unapata alikutupea cut aone kama watu walifanya the assignment she had given this time amesema we will have an, an, a cut then presentation later mbona sisemi tuanze na presentation because anataka kuona did you create time to read the cooperative societies assignment and maybe alipeana so it can be a black area yenye watu hawa maybe wana ignore or they are reading for partners partnership and why not kuja kwa teo na ambayo discuss the history of cooperatives movement in Kenya so at that point can i jump into it ama kuna question ama comment before i continue to the cooperative societies in Kenya any comment any question 
sawa sawa so it is implied that uh, everyone is okay so if we look at the cooperative societies in Kenya to repair assignment here because to discuss the history then we come with the legislations governing cooperative society in Kenya and number one kuna development of cooperative movement in Kenya and before i even go to the history lazima you, you, everyone anajua this university inaitwa cooperative university in, of Kenya the cooperative university is a result is as a result of cooperative movement in Kenya hiyo ilifomo juu ya chama ni machama ziliform hiyo university and it is the first to be formed through cooperatives from farmers teachers our to water waka form is on matama zao so now let us go to the brief history as you can see it is very brief you make it into years so number one to add in a, in a brief to you when it comes to exam you must just state the process number one mesikia kuna mtu anataka ku join oh my connection is poor where where did i lo lose you hello Mnanipata? Ukianza hiyo part ya cooperative ukiangalia hiyo madam. Oh, oh, sawa sawa, asante asante. Let me let me repeat. I was saying if you look at the previous cut yenye madam alipeana, alikujanga class then akapeana discuss the doctrine of nemodat principle na exceptions. And remember that was the same thing yenye alikuwa amepeana for assignment so you can find that what maybe people are reading for partnership and akuja aseme discuss the history and developments of cooperatives in Kenya so that will be a blind spot ikikuja kwa watu wenye they just did the assignment for the sake of it and i saw it trivial also to include it in this study then to malizia na legislation governing cooperatives for us to be at safe stand apo at least we are together Anyone? Are we together? Jared? Naslata Edwina? Are we together? together? Oh, sawa sawa, asante. So, if you may allow me, nilikuwa nasema on peer cooperatives university of Kenya, it was the first university to be established as a result of cooperatives movements in Kenya. So in kutumoja and it's a fact and you must allow it ni government to sponsor the program. And now if you look at the history, just know the steps. Now where it came from. In 1908, kulikuwa na first cooperative society was established in Kenya na ilikuwa a dairy cooperative. Then in 1931, government's first formal involvement in cooperatives when the first cooperative ordinance was enacted to regulate the operations of cooperative. So government ikaanza kuingia ikaanza kuingiza involvement na ika create what we call a cooperative ordinance act in 1931. Then in 1946, kukakuwa na inclusion of Africans in the movement when the colonial government acknowledged that Africans needed to participate in the economy through cooperatives resulting in the enactment of a new cooperative societies ordinance. So unapata the previous cooperative ordinance haikuwa may involve Africans. So in 1946, new cooperative societies ordinance ikakuwa incorporated now to also include africans and in 1955 kukatokea african involvement in the growing of cash crops following the swinnerton plan that paved the way for form formation of more cooperatives swinnerton plan ilikuwa agricultural plan na so kapata no cooperatives kanza kuingia in the cash crop area as according to 1955 and if you look from 1932 to 1969 generally so societies have been registered at that time and now these first cooperatives were predominantly marketing oriented auxiliary focus so i believe that point it was not completed and key examples now this is the completion part of it then were cooperative creameries in 1925 Kenya Planters na kukakuwa na Kenya Farmers Association so those are some just examples the new as a site when it comes to registration that occurred in, in 1932 to 1969 regime and so these organizations were originally registered as companies and only became registered as cooperatives in 1931 when the first cooperative ordinance was promulgated so remember when kama the organizations ilikuwa na the elements of companies but in 1931 the first registration of a of a cooperative ikakuwa tabled and if you look in 1965 the sessional paper number 10 of 1965 on african socialism 
this ilikuwa imeletwa na kina Tomboya in cooperation with with Uhuru uh, not Uhuru Kenyatta the former pre, the first president Jomo Kenyatta and gave impetus to rapid africanization of Kenyan economy and poverty eradication based on principle similar to those adopted by the cooperative movement so if you look at the african socialism ideal in a sense that africans for them to develop lazima wa come together and wa inue the kenyan economy and the only way to inue the kenyan economy was through agriculture and the agriculture sector maybe most preferably yuko kwa white islands wangefa kuwa, kuwa pamoja na what was to bring them together was decisional paper number 10 of 1965 with cooperative movement and in 1970 the first post independence government cooperative development policy was contained in that decisional paper number 8 of 1970 70 let me add someone anataka kuingia okay so if what nilikuwa wapi 1970 so kukakuwa na a development policy whose main goal was the consolidation of cooperative activities so at least for once tunapata that cooperative activities zinafaa kuwa consolidated in Kenya and it was brought up by the sessional paper number 8 of 1970 so ikikuja kwa hizo consolidation of cooperative activities they included improvement of management of societies intensification of education training of members committee and staff with provision of government support staff and supervisors so government pay kanza ku support these societies and in 1975 another review of cooperative development policy took place in which the government continued to recognize cooperative as vital organs for mobilizing material human and financial resources for national development and the government has to reiterate its commitment to pursue and promote expansion of cooperative activities in all the productive spheres of the economy so unapata wakacha sasa kufocus sana na agriculture part wakaamua sasa kukuwa broad in also other productive spheres of the economy kama manufacturing then in 1980s kukatokea na structural adjustment programs nini plan ikakuwa for a market economy na ililetwa into place na sessional paper number 1 of 1986 on economic management for renewed growth na it emphasizes the importance of free private sector led economic development so this time government ikaamua let us not to, to square ni sisi ndo tuna initiate this thing wacha tupe mpaka private entities the way forward na add even support financially for them to open this cooperative movements and the government through session paper number 4 of 1987 on renewed growth through the cooperative movement bado ikajirudia its commitment to enhanced participation of Kenyans in the economy through cooperative so if you are keen on this history ni kama this sessional paper zinakuja ziki put more emphasis on what the earlier sessional paper had said so it is important also to you just note the the key areas key key concerns the easy developments when zinakuja hadi kama utasahau miaka Aya, so the responsibility of organizing and managing cooperative was left to the members and their management committees while the government played an advisory role. So na in 1987 government ikakuja sasa ikakuwa more confident in that now the private sectors imeingia what sasa see to play an advisory role now waji manage their activities and it was a good plan because section paper number 1 again of 1994 on recovery and sustainable development to the year 2010 reaffirmed the need for a private sector led economy to accelerate and sustain development and through again tena sessional paper number 6 of 1997 cooperatives in a liberalized economic environment the government reviewed its involvement in the management of cooperatives by providing a legislative framework under which cooperatives wa to survive in a competitive economic environment so remember all those years akukuwa na a good legislative framework enye sasa ina ongelea on how this cooperative is to compete with each other juzi mianza kukua zimeanza sasa ku grow na zinaanza ku make an impact to other economic environment so it is important even if tutasahau the sessional paper number nipo kumbuke each sessional paper title you every title inakuja na its own enactments so unapata now finally the enactment of cooperative societies act of number 12 number 12 of 1997 re was removed co removed completely the government's role in the affairs of cooperative society this resulted in a near collapse of the entire cooperative movement in the country so unapata now we be, because of sessional paper number 6 of 1997 kukakuwa na creation of the first legislative framework na ikakuwa cooperative societies act but unapata now the government ikaju imesha imepeana this 
act into place ikajiondoa completely from cooperative movement and that removal ika lead to a near collapse to an extent that ni kama ilikuwa inaonekana cooperatives zina future na kukakuwa tena na a new rebirth lakini a new rebirth tutaiangalia in another separate video because it is a ni an area ya imeanzia from 2016 to now where we are what is the current trend of cooperative society hiyo ni an area yenye sasa ndio mode hata ataka ukapche lakini for your own good should you invest in cooperative what what is the essence of cooperative when it comes to education loans nini nini hizo ni vitu zenye tutaangalia later but at the moment you have answered the question when it comes to the history of Hizi msiwari hizi ni brief summary zilitolewa hapo juu for presentation purposes. So let us jump into now the legislative frameworks as our last presentation on this discussion today. And remember before I even jump you must note the following NB certain laws does not apply to cooperative as provided by section 95 of cooperative societies act. So ni, ni, it is important you note the laws that don't apply when it comes to cooperatives and some of the laws not to apply include the provisions of companies act cap 486 that was repealed other than those referred to in section 64 and 71 of the cooperative societies act so cooperative societies act it may refer some provisions kama section 64 na 71 of companies act zimekuwa referred into by cooperative societies act so inasema only those sections those that are applicable when it comes to cooperative societies act and then also you must note that registration of business names act of cap 499 shall not apply to a cooperative society and finally trade unions act is no longer applicable when it comes to cooperative societies act because no cooperative society shall be taken to be a trade union hiyo ni very important unafaa kujua na kuna some trade unions kama teachers nini nini hii led by anaitwa nani huyu mwenye anaongeanga sana huwa anavanga ma chains nimesahau hizo vitu i'm not advanced in current affairs so alafu kuna now the introduction this a brief nini analysis because tunapitia tu just companies act tuingie sako za tunaongelea tu generally what does it entail so to be brief unapata kuna only two laws hiyo cooperative societies act under cooperative societies act kuna cooperative rules so ni kama ni tatu sasa juu cooperative societies act ndio imegive to cooperative rules so generally currently the cooperative movement in Kenya is governed by the cooperative societies act and sako societies act and if you look at cooperative societies act in a relate to the constitution re registration and regulation of cooperative societies and for purposes incidental thereto hiyo ni ile objectives of that act and if you look at the sako societies act is an act of parliament that makes provision for the licensing regulation supervision and promotion of sako societies to establish the sako societies regulation authority sasra and for connected purposes so if you look at generally analysis of cooperative societies just juju unapata section 5 inasema pro essential essentials for registration of a cooperative society then ukiingia section 6 inasema procedure for registration alafu pia kuna kitu nyenye nataka msisahau ni it is stated that an application to register a society must be made to the commissioner in the prescribed form and be signed in the case of a primary society primary society by at least 10 person qualified for membership of the society and in the case of a secondary or apex society by a person duly authorized in that behalf by each cooperative society or cooperative union who are members thereof so hiyo nimeisema juu unapata under section 6 when it kuja kwa registration they acknowledge that kuna ile primary society kuna ile society kubwa na kuna two branches known as secondary or apex society so hiyo ni important tu ungejua then if you look at Section 11 na sema about certificate of registration hiyo ni must utapewa then section 21 ni rights of members hiyo ni poa pia members rights ikwe tabulated section 22 anaongelea members rights vis a vis the cooperative society isque rights zako zina oversee the cooperative society kukwe na admission of members alafu kuna kitu important pia nataka mjue when it comes to admission of members under section 18 It may provide that a limitation of membership to one society this is to say that no person shall be a member of more than one cooperative society with unlimited liability and no person shall be a member of more than one cooperative society having the same or similar object so kukitokea cooperative society of advocates you can it's allowed to have a cooperative society of advocates then inamaanisha you will only be able to be one 
utakuwa tu in only one of the cooperative sites because in a, it is similar in its own objective both in the well advocates welfare so the voting power of members under section 19 where every person atakuwa na one voting right then kuna taxation taxation i, I failed to capture the section but it is provided then taxation ujue most yenye inaweza unafatu kujua when it comes to taxation of cooperatives is subject to a specific tax regime and they pay tax from their profit declared as surplus and incomes derived from their streams hiyo tu ndio rafa kujua kwa tax so if you want to open a cooperative maybe in future also note that information and in conclusion cooperatives now ziko in law cooperatives do not have absolute control over their business because kuna hiyo regulatory framework sasara yenye na regulate their businesses then in ikuja kwa sako society act number 14 it's a very brief act na section kwanza 4 ina establish the regulatory authority hizo hizo zingine ni common in all acts then kuna licensing of sako societies under section 23 hizi ni common siku not kitu unique hapa unafaa ku and put emphasis on then kuna governance of sako society imeanzia from section 34 up to 39 then lastly a sako society shall not later than 3 months after the end of which financial year submit in the prescribed format inafaa kutoa every financial year wanafaa kuwa natoa hizi vitu tatu one audited balance sheet showing its assets and liabilities wanafaa kuwa na provide audit profit and loss account na wanafaa kuwa natoa a copy of auditor's report i believe now that makes the conclusion of this discussion unless kuna any comment any additional any thing you want to say i will greatly appreciate because that now marks the end of this discussion anyone with something yeah yeah popo we summary summary where Oh sum up sum up oh so yeah, thank summary. you oh summary so in summary if i can take you oh ya ile tu juju if i can take you to where we started yeah. tulianzia hapa pita lakini si, don't worry because this video itakuwa generated bado kwa youtube and i will provide also the link so generally unapata we, we covered the following areas as I outlined in your screen tulianza na understanding limited liability partnership as a new business trend in kenya na tukapata now it's a way to come and even law firms who ameanza ku embrace because unapata ime, ime allow now even cooperative movement cooperative bodies to become an a partner when it comes to partnership remember general partnership previously as it was in allow artificial artificial persons ku kuwa partners so that's a great boost and pia kikuja kwa mambo ya tax on llps tumepata pia ina promote ju unapata partners on kuwa tax at the individual level and not at the partnership level so more partner companies peers inaanza ku shift into llps then ukiangalia number 2 tuka distinguish two juju with the case law partnership versus ownership difference the case law we used was certain company versus fray an 1894 case the citations iko hapo then unapata tumeongelea liability of partners tumeongelea partnership property na hii partnership property inakuwa led to, inakuwa read together ikikuja kwa dissolution of a partnership as the next point then tukaongelea cooperative movements in Kenya tukaongelea about nini cooperative university of Kenya how it came into place and it was as a result of good profits when it came to cooperative movement in Kenya and pia unafaa kujua when the cooperative movement in Kenya ilikuwa ni kama inakuja collapse it when the the university was established wakasema what if now we start educating people on how to manage cooperatives in Kenya and in that way cooperatives sasa zikaanza tena ku kurudi tena in the market then number 7 kuka kwa legislation on cooperatives in Kenya and what i can say as a final statement is that cooperative movements zinakuwa zinakuanga poa juu unapata maybe it can help you in education and the, the new trend of real estate unapata pia cooperatives zimeanza kupata new shares when it comes to joint ventures joint ventures ni a form of business another form of business organization not just to deal in a partnership tumeongelea company then kuna joint ventures joint ventures ni kitu inawekwa ni a specific kind of vehicle like let's say pita uko na shamba mimi niko na pesa so we come into this partnership agreement not partnership we come into this joint jv agreement tunasema what if 
I give you this money, this land, we build this this apartment, then takuwa na kulipa polipoli. So that's also a new area where cooperative movements are currently playing a part. And if you want to follow up on cooperative movement in Kenya, you can also skiza these debates when it comes to Spice FM on the future of cooperative movement in Kenya. Can you be able to invest in this area? So that is a new area. Enye adikamo na isoma for the sake of the unit, ni an area peone za kuwa interested in when it comes to your future professional undertaking sama any other activity so i believe at that point we a brief summary and the video will be generated about kopoa yeah eh easy, easy notes what i normally do what what i attend my my nini my presentation now they require the notes they inbox me and I forward to them immediately. Then also the link to YouTube, Piano Generate. Uh, so anything else? So Kamakuna, allow me now to call the meeting off and now anyone can leave at their own pleasure. Thank you very much, Thank you for that beautiful presentation. It's been quite uh, uh, informative. Asante sana Muridi, asante sana. Yeah, asante. Asante, nimeshukuru. Sawa sawa, so allow me to call the meeting off. This is the way to go sasa.